So this represents the circular coil and this one is its axis. The axis will always be perpendicular to the circular coil. That is, this axis is perpendicular to its plane. So when, when I turn this coil, it will be somewhat like an ellipse. So in the derivation, the circular coil is seen as an ellipse. So it will be somewhat like this. So let us consider a circular coil like this. And let this represent, this is the center O and this represents the axis of the coil. The coil along with the axis is a three-dimensional figure. So the circular coil looks somewhat like an ellipse. Let this point be the center is of the coil be O and let this point be P. Now let A be the radius of the circular coil. Also join this point, these two points. Let's call this point. This, this one is the radius of the coil. Let's say this point be A. And let's say OP, the distance OP be X, the axial distance and the AP R. We have a current element DL, small current element DL at the point A. Now clearly this current element, let's say I be the current flowing through the coil in the clockwise direction. This current element DL produces a magnetic field at the point P, that is magnetic field at P due to the current element DL. Since this current element is very small, the magnetic field produced at the point P is also small. Let's represent that as dB. And you can use the buyout Savart law, that is the magnetic field at P will be mu zero by 4 pi i dl sin theta divided by r square. This is in, accord, according, in accordance with the buyout Savart law, mu zero by 4 pi i dl sin theta by r square. This r represents the length AP. And when you look from above, when you look from above, this AP represents the slant height. See, this one is somewhat like a cone where this is the base circle and AP represents slant height. So that the theta slant height is always perpendicular to the circumference. I'll, I'll explain that in the video. Just listen to that video. So theta will be 90. So this represents the axis of the coil and this line is is the slant height see so this angle will always be 90 degree this is our line AP clear so when you look from above above the coil it will be this land height will be perpendicular to the perimeter of the coil so this angle will be 90 degree so this is the line so again this is the axis this represents the axis and this one is the line AP clear so that db will be db is equal to mu zero divided by 4 pi i dl you can put 90 instead of theta so sine 90 divided by r square so that db is equal to mu zero divided by 4 pi i dl divided by r square Let's call that as equation number 1, since sin 90 is equal to 1. Now, this magnetic field is a vector commodity, so it has a direction and its direction will be always perpendicular to the length, that is AP. So, it will be somewhat like this, D, let's say D. Also, let's take this angle as the S5. Now, there is, there is a diametrically opposite point for A, let's say B, 
and there is a small current element like dl at the point b also let's represent that as here dl and this also produces a magnetic field somewhat similar to that produced by the current element at a let's join these two points so this also produces a magnetic field symmetric to this db so this will also be d now we have to draw an act draw an x-axis and y-axis through the point P so that we can resolve these two one, these two db. Let's say we have an x-axis like this and a y-axis like this. Also extend the y-axis to the downward so in the downward direction also so that we can resolve the db below. Now, see, I'm drawing this again. This is the x axis, this is the y axis, this one is the point B, and this one is DB. I'm, I'm just draw, drawing the point P here. So that you can clearly understand the angle between the axis and the db. And this one is, let's say, this is this is the point A, AP. And we know this angle is equal to 5. Clear. We, are, we have taken OPA equal to 5. So, since this angle, that is the angle between x-axis and y-axis is 90, this one will be 90 minus 5. Also, you know, this angle, this angle, let's say AP, let's say M, angle APM is equal to 90, that is this whole angle is equal to 90, so that this angle will be 5. So, that 90 minus 5 plus 5 will be 90. So this one, this angle will also be 5. Clear. Now, here also it is 5. And if you resolve this db, that is the db above the axis, you can write it as, this one will be db sin 5. That is, uh, this, this component is opposite to the angle 5 so this will be db sin 5 and there is a component along the angle that is along the y-axis that will be db cos 5 clear now if you look at if you resolve this db that the db below this represents the this this component is opposite to Phi. So this will be db sin phi and this represents db cos phi. Clear. So the re 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 resolution of this db is equal to db cos phi along up and db cos sin phi in the horizontal direction. For this one, there is a db cos phi in the downward direction and db sin phi along the positive x direction. Now, you can clearly see that these two db sin phi, db sin phi will add up, but db cos phi cancels each other. Clear. See this db cos phi, this db cos phi is equal and, uh, equal and opposite to this db cos phi. So these two vectors will cancel each other. So that the net magnetic field B 
that is the total magnetic field at the point B will be, we have to add all the dB sine phi. So, so we have to use the integral. So if you integrate dB sine phi along the loop, every, there is a DL in here also. Similarly, there are so many DLs. So if you integrate all the dB sine phi, you will get the total magnetic field. Clear. So this is equal to, instead of dB, you can put the equation 1. So it will be mu 0 by 4 pi i dL by r square sine phi. Clear. Let me erase this. So, B is equal to, you can take this mu 0 by 4 pi r, i r square and sin phi out, outside because they are all constants. Mu 0 i by 4 pi r square sin phi integral dl. This is equal to b equal to see, see these all are constants so you can take out that outside of the integral signs only you have to integrate dl so mu zero i when you look at the triangle p o a sine phi will be sine phi is equal to opposite side by hypotenuse so a by r so sin phi will be a by r by 4 pi r square integral dl. This r will come to the denominator. So b is equal to mu 0 i a by 4 pi r cube into integral dl. Clear. On integrating, you will get B is equal to mu 0 i a divided by 4 pi r cube. Now, integral of dl, see, integral of dl, if you look at the uh, element dl, if you integrate all this dl, you will get the perimeter of the circular coil. So it will be 2 pi a. Perimeter of the circular coil is equal to 2 pi times the radius. Radius here is a. So integral dl you can write 2 pi a. Can, you can cancel this 2 pi and this 4 pi will be 2. So b is equal to mu 0 i a square divided by 2 r cube. Now let us consider this triangle. Now, if you look at the triangle AOP, this angle is 90 degree and this R represents the hypotenuse. So, hypotenuse square of the hypotenuse will be the base square x square plus altitude square a square. So, that R is equal to root of x square plus a square. But we need to find R cube. So, cubing both sides, this can also be written as root of x square plus a square means x square plus a square whole raised to 1 by 2. So, cubing both sides, x square plus a square whole raised to 1 by 2, this will cube. So, this is equal to x square plus a square whole raised to 3 by 2. So, this equation can also be written as b equal to mu 0 i a square divided by 2 into x square plus x square plus a square whole raised to 3 by 2. So this is the expression for magnetic field produced by a circular coil carrying current on its axis. Clear. Now there are special cases for this. 
if the coil has n number of turns if the coil has n turns then the magnetic field B will be what you need to do is you need to multiply this B with n so it will be mu 0 n i a square divided by 2 into x square plus a square whole raised to 3 by 2 clear now what is the magnetic field at the center of the coil we know without taking the number of turns the magnetic field will be b equal to mu 0 i a square divided by 2 into x square plus a square whole raised to 3 by 2 now what about the magnetic field at the center b center clearly you know at the center this x will be 0 when this point p is at the center there is no x so b is equal to mu 0 i a square divided by 2 into you don't need to write the x so a square whole raised to 3 by 2 this 2 and this 2 will get cancelled so it will be mu 0 i a square divided by 2 a cube you can cancel this a square and a square here if you cancel that you will get a so magnetic field B at the center will be mu 0 i divided by 2a clear so that's the derivation